Hi, I'm Raya. I'm a member of the Boathouse studio team and we're based here in Barking by the River Roading. And we're really delighted to have the support of Barking and Dagenham early years and childcare service in bringing this project to you. Telling stories, having fun. So my background is that I'm a professional performer and storyteller and I'm also a forest school leader. And my work involves coming into schools and nurseries, working with early years teams like yours, in developing skills in engaging children in reading books and sharing a love of stories. I'm going to share with you the top tips that I find really helpful when I'm reading stories and hopefully those will be useful for you too. My tip number one, make sure that the reading environment is calm and quiet and away from distractions wherever possible. Tip number two, Read the book ahead of time. Might sound obvious, but it's really helpful if you're familiar with the story before you read it out loud. That way you're not gonna trip over any words or phrasing. Tip number three, use your voice expressively. So vary your tone, your volume, and maybe your pace and your accent. Tip number four, encourage participation by using actions. For example, if there's a part of the story that talks about spinning, I might get the children to spin whilst we're reading that section. Tip number five, ask open questions. So open questions are the ones that start with what, where, how or why, as opposed to closed questions where the answer would be a yes or a no or a right or wrong answer. And the thinking and theory behind this is we want to really encourage participation and we want the children to feel like there's nothing that they can say that's wrong. Tip number six, use props to reinforce the story and to keep the children engaged. We'll see some examples of this later in the video. Tip number seven, use the visuals in the story to encourage engagement. For example, before I'd even start reading the story, I might ask the children what they can see on the front cover. And they might say they can see a banana, and I might say, well, what's the banana doing? And that way we get into a conversation about what the story might be before we've even started. Tip number eight, make connections. So relate the story to the children's own experiences and interests to help them better understand. We'll see some examples of this later in the video. Tip number nine, encourage active listening and use the repetitions in the story. For example, before I start, I might get the children to stretch out their ears nice and wide to remind them that it's a listening activity. Tip number 10, reinforce the key themes and lessons from the story and you can do this by planning short discussions or activities that might take place before or after the reading and finally have fun enjoy the reading yourself show your own enthusiasm and the children will too shall we see what is in my story case yes. <gasps> Kitchen disco. So, what can we see on the cover? Put your hands up if you can say what you can see on the cover. What is it, Wilson? A banana. A banana. Do you want to point to the banana? There we go. So, we've got a banana. What's the banana doing? He's doing a disco. He's got. Zane, Zane, listening is well done. We've got a banana and he's playing music and he's got his headphones on. Why? So we know it's something to do with a banana playing music. Shall yeah. we see what happens? Yeah. Let's have a look. Shh. At night, when you are sleeping, there's a party in your house. And look, how do we know it's night time? Can anyone tell me how we know it's night time in this picture? There's a moon in the sky. The candy orange. 
The cat's yawning, so it must be night time. And what about this? Oh, it's a disco. Do you think there's a disco going on in the house? It's a, you're right. It's a pumping, jumping, funky bash when all the lights are out. And look, there's two children here asleep in their bunk beds because it's night time. In the quiet of your kitchen, when the moon is shining bright, the fruit jump from the fruit bowl and they party through the night. Look at all the fruit jumped out of the fruit bowl. Yep. What fruit can you see? I can see a pineapple. A pineapple. Oranges, your favourite pineapple. And look, we've got a tangerine here going woohoo! And we've got a banana going party! They're all going to have a big... Yeah, they're all going to have a big party. The orange ones, I think they're satsumas. The banana is the DJ. He plays the latest hits. He spins, can you spin with your hands? He jumps, can you jump with your hands? He somersaults, can you do somersaults? And does banana splits. Can you stretch out really wide like you're doing the banana splits? Well done, oh look, Maya's still spinning. The lemons are the show-offs. They really love to rap. They break dance on the chopping board and tap dance on the tap. The coconut is cheeky. He makes the others laugh. He dives into the washing up and has a bubble bath. Way! Can you all do a bubble bath? Just pretend we're in the bubble bath. Scrub it up, up, up. Splash, splash, splash. <laughs> Let's see what happens next. Oh, so, shake like a mango. Everybody shake. Party like a pear. Wiggle like an apple. Hey, and dance like you don't care. It's called the Kitchen Disco and everyone's invited. So move your hips and shake your pips and let's get all excited! Yay! The tangerines go bouncy bounce. They like to scream and shout. One tangerine spun around so much that all her juice came out. Yo, the pineapple is very cool. He wears his hair in spikes. He hangs out by the microwave, high-fiving fruit he likes. Can you high-five the person next to you? High-five. And look, oh look, the grapes have got a little sign going, I love pineapple. Because <laughs> they must be big fans. I love pineapple. I love pineapple. I love so, pineapple. shake like a mango. Uh, uh, uh. Party like a pear. Wiggle like an apple. And dance like you don't care. It's called the kitchen disco and everyone's invited. So move your hips and shake your pips, and let's get all excited! <laughs> the grapes are a silly bunch. They boogie in a conga. And when all the other fruit join in, the conga line gets longer. And look, there's a little strawberry with a little sign saying, Conga, your favourite. Which is your favourite? The strawberry. Mm. The pears have big fat bottoms and they groove across the floor. The apples wave their stalks around and they scream for more, more, more. <laughs> 
So shake like a mango. Party like a pear. Wiggle like an apple. Hey and oh. Uh, oh. The children, they're peeking through the door. The fruit must have woken them up. And the children are going, hey. And the fruit are going, uh-oh, busted. Ta-da! They're partying with them. Look, they've got a glitter ball. I'm sorry, it's a disco ball. Thank you. And look, they're saying, just dance like you don't care. It's called the Kitchen Disco and everyone's invited. So move your hips and shake your pips and let's get on. <laughs> At breakfast time, the party slowly. Oh, the fruit must go to bed. Should I have a big yawn? Oh, oh. They climb into the fruit bowl. Look, the apple's going up the ladder to climb in. And they rest their sleepy. So, if you're in the kitchen, and you hear them sing their song, then don't be shy, Maya, and don't ask why. Come on and sing along. And we've got the grape here going, shake like a mango. And we've got someone else here saying, party like a pear. Do you think it's the grapes? And that is the end of the kitchen disco. Well done for your brilliant listening. Shall we see what else is in my story case? Yeah. No. Okay, does apple. anyone know what this is? Apple. apple. An apple. <laughs> so, does anyone know what this is? A chopping board. Can, can we remember what happened on the chopping board in the story? The lemons, the lemons were tap dancing. Does anyone know what this is? It is like a knife. It's my apple cutting knife. So these are the sharp bits and this gets squashed down to cut the apple. But before I do that, I need something else from my case. Ooh. A cooking hat. Let me put on my chef's hat. And we, oh, do you think I need a plate? Yeah. Do you think I've got one in here? Yeah. How do you know that? <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> 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 All right, so let's cut this apple. Cut. I'm going to show you that piece in a minute. You're all doing brilliantly. Keep sitting down. And let's put these bits of apple out. Can anyone tell me what that is? A seed. What would happen if I put this seed in the ground? Zane, what would happen? It would grow into an apple tree and we would get apples. All right, so I am going to give, sit, sit yourself down so everyone can see. I am going to give everybody a piece of apple. When you get your apple, can you hold it in your hand, but don't eat it yet? Wow. Make, make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right. So. Very quickly, just take yourself a piece of apple. There you go. If you don't eat apple, you don't have to take a piece. Try not to eat it yet. Here you are. It doesn't matter, don't worry. You take your piece. There you go. There you are. And let me come round this side. Wilson, you want a piece of apple? 
Yeah, there you are. Okay, so now that we've got a piece of apple, let's hold it in our hand and just close your eyes and just have a think about what your apple feels like. A banana. And then open your eyes. What does it feel like? A banana. So let's have a good look at it. What does our apple look like? A banana and a moon. <laughs> it is brilliant. It's a banana shaped. It looks like, it looks like an apple. It does look like yeah. an apple. And it looks like a, the shape of the moon. Yeah, the shape of the moon. It's, it's smell it. Give it a good sniff. It's nice. What does it, it smell like? like uh, it I smells of flowers. Uh, like grapes. Can I eat them now? Yeah, let's eat them. When you bite into that, have a listen, see what it sounds like. <laughs> 